All right. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. If you're here and if not, I think you'll still benefit from doing this later. So if you're not here right now, go ahead and pause and get a meal or a snack ready um, so you can go through this exercise on your own um, another time. So Demi and I are here doing our first mindful meal. Um, and I've never done this. I don't think Demi's done this before, especially nope. not in this capacity. So this is new. Um, bear with us. Um, but basically, we're going to walk through how to practice eating mindfully. Um, and that can look different on different days. Um, but we're just going to kind of go through like kind of the full experience of what that can look like, which might feel a little awkward. But sometimes when you're starting something new, it does feel awkward and uncomfortable. So, um, so first, one thing I would say, and Demi, jump in whenever here. Um, one thing would be to assess like, hunger and fullness level. And that can even be something you start doing before you put a meal together. So you know, like, what am I in the mood for? Um, and what I've said before is first question is, what do I want? Second question is, what does my body need? And to answer that, what does my body need sometimes is um, going through those different types of hunger that we talked about last week. And then also like assessing your hunger level. Like sometimes we want something that's like big and filling because we're really hungry. Sometimes we're not really that hungry, but this is our opportunity to eat and we might pick something a little smaller or less with less volume. Um, so that's a good place to start. Am I missing anything, Demi? No, that's awesome. I actually, do you remember I had sent you um, kind of the factors for eating? I can pull that up really quick. I think yeah. that would be helpful too, just to, um, like Amy was saying, just that assessment piece of like at different times during the day, you know, different stages of life, like all of that, our values around um, what is a priority in that moment will change. And so I think this is so helpful for me to see where it's like, okay, if it's the middle of the day and I have 20 minutes to make and eat and prepare lunch, like maybe my priority is again like grab and go or the ease or the time to prepare. And so that is going to influence my decision about what I'm kind of selecting. Um, but again, like she said, checking in. So maybe, you know, you have a little bit more time and really the importance of like, for example, dinner would be, you know, picking something that's satisfying, um, that's comforting and um, is making memories with whoever you're eating with. So Again, this is just an example of kind of like, we're not always, of course, going to value all of those things at one moment, right? So that's going to constantly kind of change. Um, maybe we're in a stage of life where cost is really important or, you know, again, something that's familiar or comfort, all of that. So I think, again, just checking in with like, okay, what... What is my body, um, you know, seeking and wanting and kind of going through what, what is kind of the most important thing that I'm valuing right now? And um, the cool bit, I really, so if you sent this to me, I didn't read it. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll resend it. Yeah, resend it. Um, and I can post it. I think I can post a PDF in, wow. um, in the um, Healthy Way Out Circle of Hope. Um, because this might be a cool thing to one, just go through in general, like what generally yeah. impacts um, your food choices, um, what's usually the strongest, what feels like a must have versus what feels optional. I think just to kind of like check in with yourself and learn something about yourself. It's not usually a question that we're asking ourselves all the time. And then it might be something to have like printed out as you're like working on this to go through maybe on different days or different times of day, what factors influence your food choices and see what trends are there. And if you're noticing that typically, you know, having um, creativity and having it be um, like look pretty and have like different colors on the plate. If that's like usually really important to you and right now the only thing is that it's quick and that it gives you comfort, that might give you an indicator that um, like there's something else going on there that maybe it's uh, more of an emotional eating experience or even potentially a binge. Yeah. Um, I think that would be really cool to kind of like either mentally or actually physically check off um, going into some different meals as you're working on becoming a mindful um, eater. Very cool. Yeah. So yeah. I just really quick. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And then I'm going to share um, the hunger and fullness scale, which we've gone over before. Um, but just as a review, and Demi and I will walk ourselves through this and you can do this um, 
on your own if you are um, tuned in right now or if you are doing this later. So um, again, the hunger levels are mostly the green ones. So one through four, one being like, I might pass out, I'm so hungry. Um, and four being, I'm not that hungry, but I could eat. Um, and five, I usually think of as more of a transitional. You're either going from like hungry to not being hungry or going from full to not really being that full anymore. So Demi, where do you think you are hunger wise right now? I am probably between a two and a three. I'm like, I'm hungry, but I'm starting to get to the point where I'm, I'm getting kind of very hungry where I need, definitely need to eat soon or I'll start getting irritable. <laughs> So something that doesn't typically happen to me is happening right now. So I'm a little like stressed out um, today for various reasons. Um, so usually, like I think I'm getting physical signs, like I have a tiny bit of a headache, um, which isn't my normal hunger cue, um, but I have like a tiny bit of a headache. I should be hungry by now, given when I had breakfast and that I have been busy all morning. I've had no breaks. Um, so I know that like physically I should be at like, a 2.5 to 3, um, but I'm feeling more at like a 3.5 to 4. I think because my anxiety is kind of masking my hunger right now, um, where I'm just like kind of like busy and anxious. And I think this is kind of the place that people get in when they're at work and they're just caught up in working on something and it's kind of taking priority. And they'll be like, well, I just don't get hungry during the day. Um, and that can be, I think, because we get distracted. And if we don't take the time to really settle down, and check in with ourselves, we don't recognize some of those hunger cues. Again, they don't always come as this like really, really sharp pang in your stomach. Sometimes it is like a mild headache and like not feeling like super focused. Um, so anyway, yeah, I would say like, I'm feeling a little bit more at like a three and a half, but I'm probably a solid three to maybe even hungrier if I really check in with like myself physically. Um, and again, usually my body's like, hey, time to eat. And I like get those very physically, but right now for whatever reason, I'm not. Okay, so go ahead and check in with yourself on where you are. If you are joining us live, feel free to put us in the chat if you're comfortable sharing kind of where you are um, hunger wise. Uh, okay, so, and then the next thing we're going to do is kind of go over the mindfulness. Um, keep in mind, you'll be going through this a lot faster on your own. Um, but this is something you can kind of have all prepared or in the back of your mind as you work on the mindfulness piece. Um, so, Jenny, yeah. can you pull that up? Cool. So, we did go over this. Um, a few kind of videos ago, um, but we had talked about kind of how our awareness is going to greatly influence, you know, our ability to be attuned to our hunger fullness cues, to be able to be present in that moment, to taste and kind of experience the meal. Um, so 10 being kind of, again, mindless, unaware, zoned out, and then one being, um, you know, maybe as aware as we can get, just completely present, we're tasting, experiencing everything. So kind of like Amy said, like, you know, during the work day, you know, maybe you're busy, you're running errands, maybe you're with kids, you're whatever it is that's kind of preoccupying your energy and time, it's going to be harder to, um, you know, maybe connect or be more mindful in that moment. And so that's why we have to be kind of extra conscious of like taking you know, that minute to two to just check in with ourselves, try to connect to just kind of gauge where we are, not only physically, but just emotionally and mentally, like what we need. Um, and then when we have opportunities later in the day, or again, on a weekend or whenever kind of you get that break, then we can kind of try to be more present, more mindful to kind of build and practice that skill. Um, so when things are kind of crazy and chaotic, we're, we have a little bit more attunement with that. Um, so where do you feel like you are on this? Um, so I would anticipate that my mindfulness, cause I'm not eating yet, so it's kind of hard to tell, but like I would say, um, I would anticipate being probably, somewhere in like the three to five range. I think because we're doing this like format, it's not like I'm totally one-on-one -on -one with this meal. There are like 
you know, we're having conversations about it. I'm not going to be constantly being like, ooh, the burst of citrus in my, <laughs> in my mouth. Like, I'm noticing it. Um, so probably in, like, maybe a four is where I anticipate that I would be during this, especially with being, like, a little anxious. Yeah. Yeah, I would actually, I would agree with that. Like, um, because, again, we're kind of checking in, but then there's also some distraction just with yeah, we're going to be kind of talking and engaging. So I would say, yeah, like a three or four would probably be where I would fall. Yeah. And we've talked before about, you know, kind of getting an idea of where are you typically on the mindfulness scale when you're eating and then picking a goal for mm -hmm. that meal. Um, so if you're typically at like, say an eight, maybe picking like a five or a six to work on in that meal that you're practicing on, it's really hard to go from like an eight to a one. Yeah. Um, and it's not really necessary to like get more mindful with your meals. So I would say for anyone who is tuning in now, if you want to let us know where you typically are and what your goal is for this meal. Um, and then for anyone tuning in later, kind of do the same thing on your own. Um, so just kind of like, where am I typically when I'm eating at this time or in this setting? And what do I want my goal to be for today? leave it out for a second. There's a lot of work. Yeah. And we were even just saying, you know, if we hadn't maybe taken the time to slow down and kind of process this and have this meal, I think both of us would be on the higher end of the scale because we are in the middle again of working and doing other tasks. And so our lunch maybe would have been shorter and quicker and more mindless just and that's again the reality of it and it's not a bad thing um it's just again trying to find that balance and still in those moments being able to again check in with ourselves and kind of you know builds that practice a little bit and again it goes past physical it's it's checking in with emotions and needs and all of that throughout the day so that we are again, kind of aware of just our experiences and what we need. Um, so before we take this down and start our meal, I just want to kind of like, this is, I think, sounding very overwhelming. So I think as you move into like practicing this a couple of times, I think you'd be very, it'd be easy to be like, okay, what is impacting my food choices right now? I just want something that tastes good. I want something that's quick. Okay, I'm probably at like a three of hunger and um, I'm going to work on being a four mindful today. It doesn't have to be this like 15 minute ordeal. Okay. So um, Demi, what do you have for lunch today? So I have, okay, I'm going <laughs> to turn the camera down a little bit. So I have um, just kind of three bean and cheese with avocado and some vegetable tacos and then some watermelon. That watermelon looks so good. I'm super jealous. Real, watermelon and strawberries right now are really good. <laughs> so I eat those a lot. Okay. I got fancy today. Do not think that I do this all the time. <laughs> a little pressure with having you guys come. So I did like a Thai chicken noodle salad thing. Um, and I got some of these wontons and I just like love fried wontons. So I like fried some wonton for the crunch. So, so if you are joining us live, go ahead and we can start eating. If you haven't already, I understand if you already have. Um, and if you're joining in, you can go ahead and start as well. Um, and different people I think need like different things during the meal. So some people may benefit from more like distraction um, and not being like super mindful all the time and maybe like checking in occasionally. And some people can really benefit from just like being totally in that moment with the food. Um, so there's no wrong way to do this. And I apologize for you guys having to watch me eat. <laughs> I as well. Mm. I guess we didn't think about all the quiet that was going to be because I'm hungry now. I'm <laughs> eating. So I guess like at this point, thinking about like for me, I'm thinking about like the taste and the textures. Like I kind of threw random things together, hoping it would taste good and kind of like assessing how that is and what I would do differently like next time. What do you feel, I guess, went into your food choice when you were selecting, like kind of based on that, those food factors? Um, so I think it was like 
wanting something balanced. So like the nutrition piece, I just know that I feel like satiated for longer. My body feels better when I get a little bit of everything. And by everything, I mean like carbohydrate, protein, fat, fruit, vegetable, or fruits and or vegetables. Um, and I think carbs are probably my favorite. So I kind of started there. Um, and I was trying to decide between like Italian or Asian. So it was also like a convenience thing because I already had some like Asian style chicken made. Um, or I have these like caprese chicken sausages things. Um, so anyway, I went, I went Asian today. I'm going to do Italian for dinner. I'm eating with people for dinner too. <laughs> um, <laughs> doing this all day long. I get paid to eat. It's really not a bad gig. Um, so I'd say like, I like colorful. I like different textures combined. Um, I don't always like naturally gravitate toward the vegetables. Like I have to kind of like consciously like incorporate them. So like, how do I get vegetables in? Cause I want like noodles. <laughs> and, um, so there's salad in the bottom. There's like a little bit, I swear. And then some asparagus. Cause I know that if I don't use the vegetables, they will go bad, um, quickly. <laughs> so I'm trying, cause I just got them yesterday. I'm trying to use them. Um, and yeah, everything else just kind of was like, okay, what can I keep adding to this? Some cilantro, sesame seeds, sliced almonds. Sounds amazing. What about you? And yours also sounds very creative, even if that wasn't your intention. <laughs> it was very creative. Um, so I had, I had a, about 10 minutes, I, I think. So convenience was a big one because I needed to get something that was, was balanced in a short period of time. Um, so this was something I had made earlier today when I had a little bit more time. Um, and then it wasn't my main, um, I guess kind of value in this meal, but this, what I'm eating is like very, very cost effective. Cause like beans and corn and tortillas, cheese, avocado, all just again, things to throw together that, yeah, that are very cost effective. Um, and then I would say sensory because I am just really big on like the temperature thing with like it being hot and kind of needing something like refreshing, like watermelon, or again, there's like tomatoes and peppers and stuff. So it just feels like, yeah, just feels really nice to eat something that's not super warm or, um, just yeah, more refreshing. Do you get your watermelons like and then chop them or do you buy them pre-chopped? I get them and then chop them. I actually have a knife that's specifically for watermelons. <laughs> it has like a green handle and a red. It's like, it looks like a watermelon. <laughs> so I always, and I have to chop it like right when I get it or it's just like you dread, like, oh, it's sitting there. I have to cut my watermelon. <laughs> How do you pick watermelons? Because I'd say 50% of the time, like I Google it every time I go into the store. Um, and I like half the time it's great. And half the time it's like awful. You know, recently I have been doing, um, the kind of the click list thing where you go pick up your groceries. Mm -hmm. So, um, I actually haven't <laughs> been picking them recently and they've turned out good. Hmm. I feel like sometimes it does just matter like the season like you just get like a again you notice like for a certain time period they're all really good and then they kind of start getting um not as like sweet or juicy um so that but then i would say i don't really know i think i want to say like coloring like if it's really white then it's like not ripe enough or like mm -hmm blotchy I guess but when it's like more of like a vivid green then they sometimes are better but I'm not really sure like the science or what what they recommend with that yeah I, like I think there's something about like having like a one white spot where it like sat it's like that's supposed to be a good thing um, hmm. but again it's been very hit or miss whether or not I end up with a good one or not so yeah. um I get all my groceries delivered I've been doing that since before quarantine yeah. feeling so busy that I was like I can't I just this right. is, I'm just not going I'm gonna get takeout all the time mm -hmm. um, I rely like on delivery and I'm like I just hope they pick things <laughs> like. 
I've had really good success with that. I always feel like the fruits and vegetables are really decent, whatever they pick. I think they do try to take, you know, they consider that when they are shopping. So yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'm starting to like feel less hangry, which is good. I think, I think my, I think part of my anxiety was hanger. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't even know it. And then you, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, that's what I needed. That or <clears throat> eating just makes me really happy. <laughs> hmm. um, and then we can kind of touch on this. I'm, I have a long way to go, but thinking about um, your fullness level. So we can kind of talk about like what it looks like to check in. So I would say, and there's really no right or wrong way to do this. I would say somewhere between like half and three quarters of what you've plated. Um, maybe even like a quarter, half and three quarters, depending on where you are in this process. But kind of stopping, looking at like the fullness levels and just kind of seeing where you are. Let me pull those up. Um, so again, this kind of transitional place, I think if you have no idea where you are, you're probably at a five <laughs> would be my guess. If you're just like, I feel nothing um like I want to keep eating I'm not starving anymore you're probably around a five six the satiated is just like satisfied like you could stop eating and you would be okay for like an hour maybe two um I usually typically try to get to comfortably full and sometimes even if I'm gonna have like six hours back to back of clients I might try to get to like slightly uncomfortable because I know that if I don't eat a little beyond comfort, I'm gonna be starving by the time I get to eat next. Um, so again, there's no real right or wrong, but somewhere kind of in this area is a good place, um, is a good stopping point. And it depends on what you've got going on the rest of the day. So um, like for me, I am doing meal support in two hours. <laughs> so um, where I'm gonna eat my Italian food. So I'm probably gonna, it would be, a good idea for me to stop probably at satiated um, because I need to be able to eat again um, in a couple of hours. Um, but normally I would say I would like go for a seven. What about you, Demi? Yes, I'm not going to get a chance to eat until dinner. Um, well, I'll probably be able, be able to have a small snack somewhere in there, but I won't have much time. So I would honestly like to eat probably until an eight. Um, and I think right now I'm kind of at that neutral feeling, like just, I definitely still want to eat, but I'm not um, still feeling that hunger. Mm -hmm. Me too. Where, um, I can pull it back up. Where are our participants at right now? If you check in with yourself, if you're okay to do that and you're comfortable with sharing. <clears throat> feel free to add into the chat box um, where you are fullness wise right now. And I can tell you I'm currently experiencing sadness that I finished my one wonton chip. <laughs> Those are so good. Yeah, I ate one before we even started. So <laughs> I didn't deprive myself of the wonton. Um, I put them, I did a similar meal yesterday for um, my meal support that I did with my group yesterday. Is that what you have this evening, um, group? Mm hmm Okay. So, um, what was I going to say? Why don't you pull up the mindfulness scale? And maybe those who are watching, you can kind of check in with like, where are you mindfully during this meal? Keeping in mind, like there are things that might be impacting that. Like you are watching two people eat on your screen. <laughs> that might impact your mindfulness. Um, definitely like having, doing our first mindful, mindful meal, not 100% mindfully, like having conversation, um, trying to walk people through it definitely affects my ability to be mindful. Mm -hmm. um, where would I be? say more mindful like I'm really I think maybe because there are so many like good flavors and like texture going on in my meal I think I am a little more my like forces my mindfulness a little bit so 
somewhere in like the two to four range are probably kind of fluctuating in there for me. Yeah. I am the same exact same thing. I feel like I'm going between a four and a two because I'll be, I'll redirect my attention. But then when I do, I'm like very, I feel like I'm very alert and I'm noticing because the foods that I chose are really, um, again, they're like cold and refreshing and like flavorful. I'm noticing them. I'm like pretty diligent about noticing that. So yeah, I agree. So if you're tuning in and you want to share where you, how you're doing with mindfulness, let us know. The cilantro was, was really key here. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I actually don't like. Are you one of the people that tastes like soap? You know, I don't know. I, if I were to describe what it tastes like, I don't, soap doesn't come to mind, but it's just very intense. Um, so yeah, I'm not a fan. It like overpowers the flavor of everything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. I remember the first time I ever had cilantro, I had a friend, one of my best friends growing up was Chilean or her family, her dad was Chilean. And, um, and granted, like, this is not a weird thing, especially in Arizona for people to eat, but I, I had never had it. Yeah. I don't think my parents have ever had it. And they're like, oh, do you want this on your um, sandwich? And I was like, sure. Cause like, I don't often meet foods I don't like. Um, and it tasted like soap, like, I really struggled through the sandwich because I'm eating at a friend's house. I said I wanted it on my sandwich, felt obligated to eat it. I'm like 14 years old. Um, <laughs> it was terrible. And the funny thing is like, it's supposed to be genetic, whether it tastes like soap or you like it, or I guess in between you just like don't love it. Um, and I love it now. So I don't know what happened there. I need someone who is in the biology field to explain to me why it once tasted that way and now I like it yeah I have no idea that's so interesting though that that I mean could it be like everything where like I used to hate fish I thought like even the thought of fish and I'm from Washington and fish is a very big deal there like you go out to restaurants and you eat like fresh fish <laughs> um and so, but now I love it now that I don't live there. So something changed taste wise where, I don't know. Hmm. Um, so I think I'm getting close to satiated. I don't love chicken so I guess I will say partially financially it's like it's easy for me to make it's not super expensive um you can flavor it however you want like the texture of chicken has like my entire life never done a whole lot for me yeah unless it's breaded or deep fried um so I think like I'm tempted to eat around it but I also know that my body will feel better if I get more protein in so just sharing my mindful process here. Where are you in your fullness level? I would say, so I just actually finished. Um, I'm probably like a seven. I feel, I feel full and content. I've been talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I'll probably, if, if I sit here for a little bit, it'll, I'll probably get more full just as my food kind of settles and mm -hmm. catches up. And that's something too, um, kind of to work on in conjunction with the mindfulness is the pacing. Yeah. And it go, they go hand in hand. Like when I'm not mindful, I tend to eat quickly. Like I'm busy. I'm just trying to like, I'm eating for fuel and I'm just like, eating so that I don't pass out or whatever, and then I'm eating really quickly. Um, the problem with doing that when you're not mindful and you eat quickly is a lot of times you tend to overeat because you don't give your brain time to catch up with your stomach. Your stomach can be full and it takes some time, you know, 15 minutes minimum 
for your brain to get those signals um, that your stomach is at capacity. Um, so it's something to be mindful if you're typically eating in like five to 10 minutes, which like I totally do often, um, is to work on that. My meal supports with my clients has probably given me, like that's why I've slowed, excuse me, slowed down because I'm like actively helping them with pacing. And so I've worked on it. Yeah. I definitely am more on that side of fast too. I've just kind of always been a faster eater. And yeah, the more hungry you are, like the longer you wait, like, if, you know, of course the quicker you're going to eat and then you're going to more likely be on the other side of that where then you're more full. So definitely finding that balance is tricky sometimes. And one comment we have here is I always want something sweet, um, but I've worked on that and I've been drinking more water. Demi, what are your thoughts? <laughs> I think that that um, is, if, yeah, honestly, I think that that's perfectly normal. I know a lot of people who like to end their meal with something um, sweeter. I actually had a professor who, um, she would like always end her meal with um, chocolate chips, like just a hand, little handful of chocolate chips. Cause that was like the way to like, it was just satisfying. She liked sweet. Um, so I think when you're, again, when you're being mindful and you're aware of that, like, I think it's totally okay to incorporate something in your meal that is sweeter um, and it doesn't, again, have to be anything specific. It doesn't have to be like candy or ice cream or anything like that. It could be a sweeter fruit or it could be, again, like a little chocolate or something to kind of end and provide that satisfaction that it sounds like your body is kind of, you know, asking for. Um, and something, some other ideas too. I mean, I definitely like having like a mini, like, chocolate candy, like a Hershey or whatever that you kind of like regularly have. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I think the more you expose yourself to it, the less you're going to feel um, compelled to then eat not just one or two, but like five to 10. Mm -hmm. um, and then another thing is like, I notice like when I have like things called like what's, um, what is the name of the book? It's like fire, acid, salt. salt. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know the exact name though. <laughs> There's also a show on it. Right. But the idea essentially that your meal should have like a, these mm -hmm. basic components because they all kind of pull together to make it, I think, a more satisfying experience. Yeah. And so if sweet is something that you really like as part of your meal, or you could try adding it to it. So like mm -hmm. I had the mandarin oranges and like that was super satisfying. You had like the watermelon. Yeah. So you can kind of see maybe if you're incorporating something, um, whether it's like on the side, like a fruit or um, I'm trying to think of other things. Or you like salad, like you can get sweet salad dressing, like where it's like, um, or dried fruit to put on top of something. Right. So there's a lot of ways to add sweetness without feeling like, oh, now you don't have to go have like dessert or something. It can just right. be incorporated in the meal. Um, and if that is like, if you're like, no, I want my sweet and I want my sweet separately. Like, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It doesn't mean that you have to drink water to mask that. Sometimes if your body's giving you that signal, it's for a reason. So I think just exploring that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. And so I would say I'm at like a six, especially when it has some time. Mm -hmm. um, it helps because I'm like not thrilled to eat the chicken. So like... I could probably finish and still be at a six, but I'm satisfied. Um, honestly, the thing too is like, there's not a right or wrong. It's like, it's all these rules around, like you need to leave something on your plate or you need to finish everything on your plate or you should leave two bites or one bite or a quarter of the plate. There's like no good rule for how to end a meal other than what kind of fullness that is good for you. So like Demi finished her meal. I left some on the plate. I'm also going to eat in two hours and she's going to eat in like four ish hours. So the reason that like, this is about like finding out what works for you. <clears throat> Lantro. Um, and there's no like right or wrong. And that's what makes this really hard, but also really rewarding because you're finding out like, 
the mold that will fit to you and your lifestyle. So um, anything to add to me before we wrap up? No, that was actually really fun. I think I enjoyed my meal much more, more, more mindful and just, yeah, checking in and having that experience was great. So, yeah. And so let us know, cause I think there are some, um, kind of with meal support that I typically do might include like some challenges. If that's something people would be open to like challenging some fear foods, whether it could be a dessert to go along with meal, it could be just dessert. It could be like a fast food challenge pasta, um, whatever kind of things you guys are wanting to work on. That's what this mindful meal, um, episode will be for. So let us know, um, give us feedback on this. What did we miss? What do you want us to touch on? Um, what did you struggle with in this experience? What was beneficial? What did you learn? Um, and we'll post, um, I'll post those three things together, the hunger and fullness scale, the mindfulness scale, and also that um, the factors that influence our food choices. Um, so they're all going to be together and you can review that at your leisure. So thank you for joining us everybody for our first mindful meal. I will be posting about the book that we're going to start in the next day or two. Um, I just need a final tally. I do know that it's between health at every size and anti-diet. Um, so I will give you some details on that and what the book will be. Um, and we will see you next time for, we'll do some meal prep. I'll also put out a poll about that. What do you guys want to see us do? Um, what do you want to learn? Um, and we'll do some like live um, meal prep or something like that next time. So thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.